As we have learned from previous studies, we're not flying away from trials and tribulations. We're not going anywhere. So to help us through these anxious times, we will be looking to the Bible for answers and comfort. Now that we've learned that the secret rapture is a false doctrine and we will go through tribulation, let us search scripture to see what God has to say to us. Please underline or mark these passages in your Bible. Now when you get into a bind and you need somebody to talk to, turn to God. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. The thief is a symbol of the devil. We are the sheep people, or the followers of his word. This is Paul writing to the Christians in Rome. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Let's go right on through to Second Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Now fear is a word that we hear an awful lot about today, and we might as well include the words worry, terror, and anxiety to the list. All these words are being used even in Christian circles and among God's people. People are afraid to travel. They will not get in airplanes or visit foreign countries. Embassies are being closed, and every night we're hearing about terrorist bombings, our troops being attacked, tsunamis, earthquakes, and devastating hurricanes. We are almost to the point where we're afraid to turn on the TV for what we might hear next. I'm not afraid to admit I personally have a problem with anxiety. Sometimes I get myself so wound up it's hard to think straight. So many worldly pressures, timetables, and what-if thinking. Sometimes it just takes one of these moments for me to slow down, take a deep breath, and pick up the Bible. Fear, worry, anxiety, and terror are the works of our adversary, and it brings a snare. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. We can be so scared or frightened about what's going to happen. Am I going to crash the car on the way home tonight? Am I going to go home and find out the house has been robbed? We worry about all this stuff, but we really shouldn't. The Bible says, of course, that one of the major signs of the end time is that there's going to be lots of anxiety and fear coming upon the earth. Jesus foretold this on the Mount of Olives before his crucifixion. Men's hearts fail in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. A few decades ago, when a person would tell someone they were suffering from anxiety and stress, people tended to laugh at them, but certainly not now. Their response is changed to, hey pal, stand in line, or, oh, can you spare a Xanax? Our society has turned into a dog-eat-dog, -dog, riotous world. Doctors and medical people are now acknowledging that stress, worry, and anxiety are killing people. And I wouldn't be surprised if Paxil and Zoloft have surpassed chewing gum sales in America. I'm not putting down on it. It's a real problem. I read an article that said there was in the neighborhood of 19 million Americans afflicted with anxiety-related illnesses. If you recall, Jesus prophesied this would happen. But keep reminding yourself that it doesn't matter how bad it gets. God is in control. Now these factors of fear, terror, worry, anxiety are destructive forces. The devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. We live in a sinful world, thus we have fear in our lives. Fear is destructive, while faith is creative. So we have these two going diametrically opposed to each other. Fear is the opposite of faith. Do you remember what happened to the disciples when they were crossing the Sea of Galilee? They were on the boat with the Lord Jesus, and he had fallen asleep. A storm broke out, and the waves began crashing against the boat. Fear got a grip of those disciples, even though Jesus was in the boat. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind. And he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Jesus stood up, and he said to the wind and waves, Peace, be still. Jesus then rebuked them for their lack of faith. This was a test, and they failed dismally.
The boat wasn't going to sink because Jesus was in the boat. It couldn't have sank. They forgot the presence of the Lord and they thought, we're going to drown. So we learn from scripture, fear is the opposite of faith. Do you ever think of how we communicate every day? I'm afraid not. I'm afraid so. I'm afraid I couldn't be there. Oh, I'm afraid of this, that, or the other thing. Most of the time we don't mean it, but we have become conditioned to say it. Now I have some thoughts for you to ponder. Fear is real. If you think about it, fear is really faith twisted or perverted. It is the lack of perversion of faith that causes fear. Because if you have faith, you don't have fear. Faith in God is good, right? But if we start to have fear, isn't that putting our faith in the devil? Everything then becomes twisted or inverted. We are not feeling the way God wants us to, but the way the devil desires. It's really like a teeter-totter. If we have an equal amount of fear and faith, we are right in the middle, a state of equilibrium, but we're not going anywhere. We just sit there. We really want to have more faith so we're lifted up to God. But in order to have more faith, in order to be lifted up towards God, we have got to push the fear away to the other side. What are the things that we can do to overcome fear, stress, and anxiety? The first and most important thing is that we've actually repented of our sins. Be sure all our sins are forgiven on a day-by-day -day basis. We should be bringing forth any shortcomings, failures, mistakes, or sins, and asking for forgiveness. I will tell you why this is important. As a believer, when we sin, we feel guilty. We feel bad. The guilt builds, and then we begin to expect something bad to happen to us. That's the devil at work. Now, if we sin and expect something bad to happen, we have a wrong concept of God. I sinned, I slipped up, I lost my temper. I did something wrong, and now something terrible is going to overtake me. This is exactly how Job felt. For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Job had a mindset. He expected these bad things to happen, and those were the very things that came upon him. He prayed every day, don't let this or that happen. He didn't pray in faith, but he prayed expecting something bad to happen to him, and it did. You can get yourself in a mindset, especially as a believer. If we sin, backslide, or slip up, the devil will work against us. So we must confess our transgressions to the Lord so we feel the forgiveness he offers. We should confess and repent to the Lord as quickly as possible. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, I slipped up. I want it washed away. I want everything settled. There is a famous saying that goes something like this, Keep short accounts with God. What this saying means is repent of your sins immediately. Get it put behind you and try to do better next time. You will sin again, but keep short accounts. It's really like a credit card. $20 here and $15 there. The next thing you know, you're over your available credit and you're afraid you cannot pay the bill. But you see, the Lord doesn't have a limit on your spiritual credit. You pay up by repenting your sins and you're back at a zero balance. Avoid the panic by not letting the balance build to begin with. However, if we allow our unrepented sin to multiply one on top of the other, if we keep putting off talking to the Lord, we will gradually become buried in habitual sin. It will fester and the guilt and shame will grow, perhaps to the point we feel we've sinned way too much and beyond forgiveness perhaps to the point we become too ashamed and feel unpardonable. Instead, we should confess our sins every single day because unconfessed persistent sin will bring you into fear, anxiety, and bondage. If we confess our sins to the Lord every day, this will help us in a couple ways. First of all, we will not allow the devil a place to work. Secondly, we will get into a daily routine of talking to our Lord and Savior.